All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. We thank you for this time that we have devoted to you, God. We yes. thank you for this time, God. We thank you for the individuals coming in, God. We thank you just, dear Holy Father, just for being you, God. We pray, dear yes. Father, that this message, dear Holy Father, that you have given to us to minister to your people, God, that it be right now word unto them, dear Holy Father, that you open up their minds and open up their hearts, so God, that they may be, they understand what you are speaking to them, God. We love you, God, and we honor you, and we adore you, Lord. Yes, we Lord. thank you, God. In your Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Jesus, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm just so glad that we're here on tonight for our word study. Amen. We're here on tonight for word study. And uh, that we're so honored to have with us on today a face that you have heard sing in the background before, but has uh, become one of the faces now to be on camera for such a time as this. What you say? <laughs> All right, this is Sister Amisha Dennis. So, you know, those of you that know her um, know that she is one that loves the Lord. She is on the praise team at a certain church. I'll let her tell us about that <laughs> and uh, the things that she does there. So uh, but she's here with us. She's been a part of Sure Word Fellowship since the beginning because she's also um, a part of our Guarded Heart, which was our initial crew. So she's the OG, Old Garden. <laughs> All right, the OGs. <laughs> she's a part of the OGs for Old Garden Hearts and, um, and our first crew for coming out. And she's one of, I think, the first one to graduate yeah. that was in our Garden oh, Heart. Wow. Yes. So we're just so pleased that she's with us on tonight. And uh, we're going to uh, go right into the messages that uh, the Lord has given us for today. Uh, we're in a series called under cross examination under cross examination and we talk about cross examination i talked about how i like hearing about colombo where he says i got one more question just one more thing mm -hmm. just to make sure that he kind of gets it right and so when we read this bible sometimes we you know we want to um re rewind and review things that people have said to make sure that you know, there's no lie in it or there's no mm -hmm. fakeness in it. But uh, when it comes to this word, we can cross-examine it all day long. Mm -hmm. Because before one jot or one tittle of his word would fail, heaven and earth would have to pass away. Mm -hmm. But then as people, uh -huh. we always want to cross-examine other folks. You exactly. know, do. we want to look and see how they living mm -hmm. and do like, well, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's a part of the thing because remember, when you go to correct something that someone has done, the first thing out of their mouth is, well, you know, they want to point out, well, how are you telling me about something I did when look at you? Look at you. What and you so we want to say, wait a minute now, but we're trying to operate in love. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about examining someone, the word tells us not to judge lest we be judged and we all fall into a great condemnation ourselves but we can have righteous judgment 
And that means that we judge according to the cross's expectation. Right. What has the cross done for us? Mm -hmm. And so we're going right on in on today. Oh, my Lord. I tell you, Sister Misha Dennis has a lot to share with us, I'm sure. Amen. <laughs> that, that's uh, that, uh, that Abdulam. Share, share with us a little bit oh, about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I bring you greetings. Yes. From Showers of Blessings Harvest and Woo! Woo! <laughs> all right. And who's there, Showers? And my apostle is Apostle Willie King Jr. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I just um, graduated from Abdulam Bible College. It's our bachelor's. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So amen. Well, people like me just know Christ crucified, and we thank God that we know about the blood. This is what we're here for. Amen. That is it's about bringing forth the word, making it alive unto us. Exactly. Um, the way, because the word is living. Oh, it is powerful. Um, it is sharp. It is quick. Yes. It is alive. Alive. Amen. Alive and so and well. we want that. Uh, oh, come on now. What you say? Alive and well. <laughs> uh, okay. And it's a well word. Amen. And so we're bringing that word on tonight to you. And we're coming from Luke chapter 15. All right then. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to turn it on over. Read it. Read it. I mean, <laughs> all right. So this is the parable of uh, the prodigal son. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. We're going to go in between the English English Standard and the King James Version for context and comparison. Because when we like to read our word, we like to study our word, it's always good to get different versions and to actually you know dissect the word and get different definitions of the word. Because when what in one context or one um, version may be different than another version. So it's always good to get into broadening um, your understanding and broadening your mind in that. Especially when you're deep in a word, oh, you want more context, you want more definition, you want, you want why, who, what, when, where, why, you wanna know all of that. So that's what we're gonna go in between um, the English Standard and the King James Versions. So this story is um, coming from when Jesus is giving examples of parables, so parables in definition are short stories and short stories of morals or spiritual spiritual lessons and so this is what jesus is giving to uh spread the gospel and uh so this is where we're going from the prodigal son so luke 15 and 11 and he said there was a man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the inheritance of the property that is coming to me. So he rushed his father. He said, Daddy, I want my inheritance now. It's my money and I want it now. And so, you know, sometimes different things, when we ask the Lord for early for things, we're not ready for them. And so when the Lord, we're going to get them. We're going to get them when he wasn't ready for them. All right now. He said, Father, give me my assurance, my share of property that is coming to me. So he knew what was coming to him. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. So far from where he was, far from his home, far from where he knew anybody else probably knew him, far from from what he thought was out of sight and out of mind. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. In different versions, we have different reckless living. And we have another um, word for reckless, reckless living. They say this reckless living was without morals, without um, basically knowing, not, you know, not, no, nothing with no home training, basically. And when he had spent everything in severe famine, arose in that country, he began to be in need. Mm. So when he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. You know, back in the day, pigs we, um, were unclean animals. So that's got to be a, a little low low standard to be feeding an unclean animal. So he went from 
having property and having riches and land to feeding pigs, all because you wanted your inheritance early, all because you wanted to go out early before time was due. Mm. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Mm. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? Mm. But I'm here perishing in hunger. I will rise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, mm -hmm. I have sinned against heaven. Ooh, and I have before sinned you, against mm. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Mm -hmm. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. But while he was still long away, his father saw him. And felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Wow. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be no longer worthy. Ooh, Jesus. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robes and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the flattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this is my son who is dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. All right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we're going right on into this word on today because uh, as we talk about under cross examination, we are in our third teaching on it. And as we are moving forward, we're talking about going full circle, full, full circle, circle cross-examination. And this is word study. And the word study is where we are uh, making sure that this word, which is written mm -hmm. out, that we rightly divide it. Okay. So we're going right on into the W-O-R-D on tonight. And we're going to start with verse number one, uh, because sometimes, you know, we look over the words and we need to know what it's saying here. So verse number one says, now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. All right, hold one moment right there. Woo, see? Mm -hmm. Well, it says here, now the tax collectors and the sinners were all drawing near. Mm -hmm. So that means that in verse in verse 14, excuse me, chapter 14, there must have been something going on before that. All right. And so that meant that Jesus was, if we read verse uh, chapter 14, we'll find out that Jesus was doing some teaching earlier and that the people draw near as they heard the teaching mm -hmm. what pertained to them there we go there we go and who draw near was now the tax collectors and sinners yeah now i'm addressing these tax collectors and the sinners all right and so pharisees and scribes grumbled because now the attention is off of them and the attention is on the teaching of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The word that was made flesh and dwelt among us is declaring the word. Amen. He's declaring himself through this word to them. And so when the Pharisees and scribes grumble saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them, that's to say, oh, they're tax collectors were already called sinners because they were beating people out of money they thought had bad reps they, they, come on now <laughs> very bad reps and he says so now these other the sinners had bad reps too they mm -hmm. weren't holy and righteous Unclean. and clean there we go didn't study the word like we Ugh. study the word oh my he says not only does he receive them but he eats with them and you know eating is fellowshipping Eating is a way of saying that I have a, a common bond. You, you Breaking know, bread. There you go. We want to break the bread together. That means I'm getting down with you. You know, exactly. I'm not, there's no big I and no little you. 
But when we can eat together, you know, there are certain restaurants we probably can't afford to go into. And it's because the prices on the menu mean that you don't hang with me, right? <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. But when he comes out as the son of God and he eats with them, and it says here that they draw near to him because of him doing some teaching. Verse 3 says, so he held them, held them this parable. So he told them this parable. And what, what we know about Jesus is that a parable is what? A short story um, of moral lessons, more about um, spiritual lessons told by Jesus to spread the gospel. Okay. So that means that this is not something that actually happened, but it's something to explain to them what heaven or the meaning of this story, the moral of it is like. So a parable is a similar story. It is a para. That means almost as kind of thing. All right. So when I think about a parable, then I'm thinking now that Jesus is talking to who? Verse number one tells us he's going to address the tax collectors and, and the sinners. So when he gives a, um, some something, he's going to talk with, like, so if he's talking with farmers, he may talk about grain. If he's talking with uh, tax collectors, he's going to talk about what? Taxes and money. The, come on, <laughs> taxes and money. All righty. So let's then go on to verse number four. Well, look, I do like to, I do like it when I do love the fact that Jesus does use parables in a way to um, not necessarily simplify, but illustrate in a way that people can understand. I truly love that that God won't that Jesus won't judge you on what you do know and what you don't know. And I love that where anybody wow. can get the word, anybody can understand the word. Yes, yes, yes. All right, that's oh, that's good. That's good right there. Good right there. And for what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in open country and go after the one he's lost until he finds it? Hold on. <laughs> he's talking to sinners and tax collectors. And verse number four says, what man of you, because remember now, the Pharisees and the scribes are sitting there saying, hmm. He talking to them people. He talking to us. Okay, he talking to them. So then Jesus addresses them, mm -hmm. those Pharisees and scribes, and says, now, what man of you? Who are you? What man of you? Which one of you having a hundred sheep? If he lost how many? One. One. Uno. Mm. One of them would, and he says now, lost one of them, does not leave the what? 99. The 99. In the open country and go after the one that is lost. Now, this open country speaks about a open area, a open field, an open field, land, no trees, only well, little trees and little bushes, but an open land, big field. They say in a dark lake. Imagine if it was at nighttime. It's just plain darkness. <laughs> Come on. And he goes out looking for one sheep until he finds him. So he doesn't stop. He, he goes with one stray sheep. He keeps on knocking. He keeps on seeking. He keeps on looking for the what? One sheep. Mm -hmm. One. One. Until he, so he leaves the others out in open country where, they, you know, there's nothing around for them and so they can't, they're not going to do anything until he returns. Because they're sheep. Can't do anything. They're not going to do anything until he returns. So he leaves them out and he goes looking for the one. Amen. Looking for that one. All right. And then it tells us now that when he goes, he goes until he finds it. In verse five. Uh -huh. And when he found, when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders. Wait a minute now. Hold on. <laughs> keep on. Keep on. He lays it uh -huh. on his shoulders. 
rejoicing at that. Okay. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Hold on. We're talking now about word study. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. <laughs> and I, I think we just we just said something here that's in this scripture. When the man found the sheep, mm -hmm. he did what with the sheep? Laid the sheep on his shoulders. Hold on. This sheep that went astray went walking off, lolly da -de la da -de la da da when he he went out to look for it, the sheep was doing his own thing. Just doing his own thing. Doing being disobedient, wasn't hearing his calls, no nothing. And sheep don't have good sense. So the sheep didn't even know he was lost. He just out there wandering. Wandering around. And you got the, you know, okie doke. Okie doke, okie doke. Everything's fine. Da -da 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 -da. Not even realizing really that he that the sheep is so lost. That but when the when the shepherd finds the sheep, he picks the sheep up and puts it across his shoulder. And I remember there was a um, poem out one time. Mm -hmm. It's probably still out now um, about how that that when you were walking along and. Then when you looked, there was only one set of footstep footprints. Footprints in the sand. Yeah. yeah. Footprints in the sand. Okay. And it's because God was, Jesus is carrying you through those hard times. Okay. Carrying us. Okay. So now this sheep, and we, we got to think about sheep. Sheep are these little, well, they got short legs on them. I mean, real short legs on sheep. Mm -hmm. But they got fat to them. And they can carry, if they have not been sheared, they have a lot of weight on them. Mm -hmm. Big old sheep. Wool and fat. Okay, wool and fat. And so when, and this is what's so important to, for us to understand as believers. Mm -hmm. When we're compared to sheep, mm -hmm. we have to know that um, these sheep are just like we are. That we are, um, sheep have to be cared for. Yeah. Because. They need direction. Okay, they need direction. They need constant shepherding. Not just from the wolf, but also from themselves. Have you ever, were you around when they had that, help, I've fallen. I can't get up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's sheep. That is literally how sheep are. Sheep are so that they're, they have, I've got a, you know, like this example. For sheep, here's their body, and then you've got these little toothpicks sticking off of them that are their legs. So when a sheep lays over on its side and they, and they go, roll over, roll over, whoop, that, that sheep is like a little cockroach. Their legs are kicking up in the air. <laughs> and in no ways can they turn themselves back over on their legs. The legs are too short. They can't reach for anything. They're groping in the air. So a shepherd has to always be on watch day and night because we'll kill ourselves. Kill us. <laughs> It, it, and, and this is because and like you when we talk about um sheep we're talking about how even the weight of the world mm -hmm. can be on us and we'll get to that i know we'll get to that because i know there's a lot that you can share <laughs> about how we can put so much on us, allow so many things to be attached to us mm -hmm. and not go back to get sheared, mm. not go back to the altar to get it out. The mm. sheep need to be sheared. What you say? Because when they have too much on them, they'll die. I remember I watched some kind of documentary one time about sheep being sheared one time and they're not groomed properly. It becomes unhealthy. It becomes 
a burden a weight and they'll start to get infection they'll start to get diseases because they weren't sheared and just like oh i keep all all of that again so in this natural so in the spirit so when we when we we bear so many things of the world of depression and so much stuff going on my job so much stuff going on my family and we're wondering what what's the next step to do where should i go what should i do how do i get rid of this how do i how i don't know who i am anymore i feel when all your answer all the whole time is god the word wow going back to the altar going back to having a relationship with god getting wow. in his presence being in his face i tell you when when you mm. don't, when you aren't sheared, when you aren't heard, when you aren't uh oh, <laughs> when you aren't pruned, okay, That's when you're not pruned, when you're not pruned <laughs> properly, I tell you, there's so much things that you don't realize is that's attaching to you mm -hmm. on a day to day basis, even a day, even hourly basis. So many, so many things are being attached to you, and you have to be pruned of all that. And God doesn't want us to be like that. And, uh. oh, oh wow, <laughs> oh wow. All right, so we can't do anything. We can't save ourselves. It takes the good, come on, the good shepherd. This one, and the scripture, we're reading this right here. He says that he picks him up, places him on his shoulder. Wow. Okay, keep on reading, keep on reading. And... Just so that I tell you, he gathers his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep that I have lost. Gathers the neighbors and the friends together. Gets the community together. For one sheep. What? You say, all right. <laughs> hey. All right, I'm going to go glory. I got to do like the old saints used to do. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Hey, glory. Hey, hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> Again, so in this natural, so in the spirit, he was rejoicing for this one sheep. Most people, when they see when one thing, so in the natural, so in the spirit. So when um, the shepherd went for this one sheep, he left his 99. This one sheep that went astray. This one sheep that didn't know where they were going. This one sheep that didn't know their way back. He went out and went to go find that sheep through darkness, through probably different, he probably was tired at the end of the night trying to find this one sheep. And everyone around him was telling him, why? I mean, why are you going out for this one sheep? Uh -huh. But he was saying it's better to rejoice with this one sheep. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. After this one, amen, after the one. All right. I tell you, we're going, we're going to keep on, amen, rolling with this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And seven, just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. You said just so. Just so. Like this thing. Like this, like that. I tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There will be less, more. There will be about the same, more. There will be a don't care, more, 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 more. What you say? Wait, 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 wait. More than the man who not only went out looking, then he put him on his back and wait. Put more. He this man went out, got the sheep, and put him on his shoulders, and walked back with. Now sheep ain't light. They sure ain't. But he got the sheep and put him on his shoulders, and walked all the way back. Then went 
walking and leaping and dancing and rejoicing and telling the neighbors about that he found that one sheep. And it wasn't that this was the prize sheep, the most beautiful sheep, the youngest sheep, the one that was going to make him the most money. It just was that he was just his. His. Did, did he understand he was his? He yes. said, because he's mine, I'm going to go, I'm going to leave these and go get what's mine. Mm -hmm. But he says, just like this, all right, I will just like this tell you, mm -hmm. there will be more joy in heaven over in, once, more joy in heaven, in, in heaven, in heaven. All right, so if the neighbors in the natural are people, neighbors and friends, neighbors and friends, then the joy in heaven, who are the neighbors and friends? I'm going to say the angels. What you say? Oh, the angels up there rejoicing. Come on, the angels and saints are rejoicing with him over that one raggedy acting. Contrary sinner repentant. Come on, what you say, sinner, my Lord. Now you know that's something right there. He thinking so much of what's because all souls are his. All souls. And he was going to get him. No matter how far you think you went he, astray. He wasn't giving up on him. Mm -hmm. oh, my Lord. Thank you, God. <laughs> Who knows? I would have been where I would have been. Oh, my Lord, they come and get me. <laughs> oh, don't have me start singing it. If it, 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 it. <laughs> yeah. For the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Oh, where would I be? All right, go ahead on, honey. Go ahead on. Go ahead on. We're on verse number eight. All right, and this goes to the second parable, another parable that Jesus is, is illustrating about the lost coin. Oh, okay. So we're talk, we've are we already talked with the Pharisees and the scribes, which are those that write the word out, and they write it so that there is not a T that is not crossed and no I that is not dotted. Mm -hmm. So now we find that he's also talking to, he's going to address the, Come on, that's come on. That's collectors, baby. Okay, come on here. Come on here. Or oh, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? Oh. Mm-hmm. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found a coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is more, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Oh, so we don't already answer the look at the Bible answer the question for us. Did we have to guess at it? No. All right, so in the parable of the last comp coin now, here's this woman. And she's got ten. Now silver had to be worth a little something, something. Mm -hmm. That she would do what? When she recognizes she's lost one, she recognizes, so this silver coin must be valuable to her. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if we drop a penny, do we go back and look for it? No. Mm -hmm. But this woman, if she loses one of her silver coins, what does it say she does? She lit a lamp and swept the house and say, see, or diligently. Now hold on. So she put a light on him. She said, I'm going to yeah. make this corn shine in the light because it's got the glisten. So it's dark. Come on. Come on. She said, Where, wherever it may be, I, I'm, gonna, I'm putting the light on so that this coin can be seen for what's the value. So now this coin then couldn't wasn't talking but when the light comes upon it it would cause it to glisten mm -hmm. and be seen but not only does she put the light on 
but it says she sweeps. She that means that she grabs up everything in the path looking for it. Mm -hmm. Making a sweep of the house, seeking diligently. <laughs> so was just in the same way the man didn't come back until he found that one sheep. Diligently means she wasn't giving up. Was not giving up. All of her, you know Checking what? every crack, every crevice. Come on now, come on. Because you know if I drop a hundred dollar bill. I'm going to tell the whole house shut down now. All of my emotions will be in it. All of my thoughts will be in the value of what this means to me. Mm -hmm. If I work for it or if it was given to me. I'm still going to be thinking in that manner concerning it. So I'm going to say, Lord, you care that much for me? You care that much for me? That you would sweep the house looking, 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 looking to find me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Woo. And then what does she do in verse 9? And then when she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the coin that I had lost. Now, wait a minute. She going to tell them, Rejoice with her. But there's one coin. Okay. You let me find a $100 bill that was missing. <laughs> and I'm going to tell somebody. That is very true. <laughs> I'm gonna tell somebody. I'm gonna tell, tell somebody. Amen. I'm going to tell somebody about that coin and, I, and how I and how I had to seek for it. Mm -hmm. The testimony. I love huh? Woo, I went to digging in here and I went to reaching out there and all the world. Oh yeah, you gonna know how I made it over in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And what is the what does verse ten say of of of, of what, 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 what Luke chapter fifteen? And it comes in full circle again. Full circle. But he is saying, so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Joy before the angels of God over one sinner. So that means God, right now, he done told the story. Look at y'all. Look what I done found. Look, look what I found. Look at him. So my name woo, was broadcast in heaven. <laughs> He knows my name. <laughs> All right, Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. And he done told everybody about me. Mm -hmm. Look at him. And it's just a point in time to like get what? There. Oh, my Lord. Okay. I just, y'all know how to got happy. I'm special. Oh, no, I'm special. I was the one. The one, yes. Hallelujah. Ooh. Amen. We going full circle with this. All right. So now we're down to... Amen. Chapter uh, 15 of Luke, verse number 11. And he said, now he was addressing the prodigal son in this parable. Okay. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of my property that is coming to me. Mm -hmm. And he divided his property between them. Now days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey to the far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. Mm. And we, when he had spent everything, a severe famine rose in the country, and he began, began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out of the citizens of the country. He sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. Mm. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. Yeah. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself and said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough of bread? But I perish here mm -hmm. in hunger. Mm -hmm. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. So treat me as one of your hired servants. Mm -hmm. And he arose and he came to his father. But while he was still long off, way off, his father saw him. His father saw him mm. and felt compassion mm. and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Oh, Jesus. 
Oh, I'm just holding. Okay, that's all right. Hey! All right. Oh, glory. Hey! And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. No longer worthy to be called your son. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Go keep on. I, I just let's keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. We'll bring that. And bring the flat cow. All right. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robes and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the flattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he's found. He began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, what was these things meant? And he said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed a fattened calf, because he has received him safe, back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go back, go inside. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered to his father, look, these many years I've served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young coat that I might celebrate in my, with my friends. But when his son of yours came, who has devoured our property with prostitutes, and you killed a flattened calf, caught calf for him? And he said to him, son, you were always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It is fitting to celebrate and be glad for your brother who was dead and is now alive. He was lost, and now he's found. Wow, my Lord. Okay, we're just gonna break this down. We're gonna try to do it a little quickly. Uh, amen. But but we we got we got a little bit of time. Amen. We we can can we do it in one hour? I believe we can do all of this in one hour. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We started a little. Amen. Working on this thing. So this is what happens now. We're talking about a word study, and so we want to get all we can out of the scripture. Right. Right. Right, right. So when he talks about this father having two sons, that the father would give me the share of property that is coming to me. Uh, now, what happened back in biblical days is when we talk about sharing property, the oldest son would get the son's portion and the younger son would get another portion. So it's talking about this man having two sons. So the idea of culture was that the oldest son is supposed to take care of whatever family is there. So if he had daughters, if he had wives, that sort of thing, the responsibility for taking care of them falls on the oldest child. So if property was divided up half and half, it was that was not how it was. The youngest son would get a third and the oldest son would get two thirds because they had to take care of the family and whatever needs. So that's why when we go back into um, some of the stories that we see about Elijah and Elisha, mm -hmm. and he wanted a double portion, he was saying, I wanted the son's portion of the older son, the one that is that, that the anointing, everything is passed to. Okay. So it just doesn't mean double mint gum, he said, I really want that anointing that falls on the son as me being your son in ministry. All right. So it goes into now him talking about this younger son that uh, he says, I want what's mine. So the father then issues him out what would be probably a third mm -hmm. of, of whatever it is that he had for the others, which was still enough for the father to keep on living and doing everything that they needed to do. And the older son of course, stayed with the father because he had a mature level to know that it was his responsibility to take care of home. Right, right. All right. So it says, after he gave, divided it to him, it said, not many days later, say that money was burning in his pocket. It was. Not only was it burning in his pocket, it was burning in his heart. Burning in him. And he and so what he did was 
the son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And now what he did was he went, now this far country means that they didn't have the same culture that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he went off into this far country. So we would say he went out into the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he never did seen before. All right, now. <laughs> and he went out there, acted a what? Oh, nothing. <laughs> All right. So he went out to the far country, and there he squandered, wasted his property with what kind of living? Reckless living. Reckless living. And what is a reckless living kind of thing? Worldly, ungodly living, morally corrupt living. Woo! Come on now. All, All right. That. Act like he ain't had no home dreaming. Oh, act like the word wasn't being taught. Oh, okay. And all the foundation is getting his damn good. All, all that foundation on how to get and have and do and do it in the Lord. So you know what? That beautiful singing voice you have, Gloria. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got it in the Lord. You got that you did. So now would I want to throw it out for the world? Or am I gonna keep it with the Lord? Keep it with the Lord. All right, the car I'm driving, it was a blessing, a miracle. Amen. God did it for me. So now, am I going to take that and drive it and put it in the, put it in the parking lot at the local club? Uh, dude. All right, am I going to drive that book right on the church and tell God, thank you. Amen. So this is what happened. He was young and he was foolish. And so he had reckless living. Mm -hmm. And he spent Everything. everything. <laughs> now, after he spent everything, that means that he didn't use wisdom. Because, you know, they tell us to save something back for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. exactly. Amen. You know, if you get, if you got $5,000, you better take at least one $100 bill and put it in a drawer somewhere. We was taught that. Yeah, exactly. He was in a, I want to say he was in a microwave frame set of mind. Because he wanted his inheritance right then and right there. But his father had probably had a set time to give him his inheritance when he was ready. Again, when God gives him one and has something for us in the future, he shares it with us, shows it to us what we're going to get. Yes. And we're so ready to get it. And when we're not ready, we ask God, we want it now. And we're not ready. What happens if God gives it to us when we're not ready? Lord, what just what happened to him. Amen. Just what happened to him. He was reckless without wisdom from the Lord in what it was that he needed to do. My Lord. And it says that a severe famine. Not a light one. Mm, <laughs> a severe famine arose in that country. The one where he had done spent all of his goods, all of his property in reckless living. And it says, and he began to be in need. You know, they tell us that awful day will surely come. He began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country. And when we talk about hiring himself out, that means that he said, hey, I'll work for you. I'll, I'll work for food. We'll work for food. Come on now. Hey, he hired himself out. I will work for you just to have a place to stay, just to have food to eat. I will work for you. And what happened? He sent him in the fields to what? Be pigs. <laughs> oh, how low can you go? <laughs> low, low, low. Come on. Low, 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 you can go. Amen. Say, so when you go out into this world like this, he said now, he hired himself out to these to this foreign country, a citizen of this foreign country. So he, he got with a friend of the world mm -hmm. and then had to ask the friend to help him out. Still didn't turn to God. Still, Still. didn't repent. Went on out a little further in the deep. And ended up yourself. Ooh, mm -hmm. right there. And ended up feeding pigs. Now let's see. Now this is no one gave him anything 
Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got 16. Oh, go ahead. Um. Oh, you mind if I read it from the, the King James Version real quick? Go ahead, read, read, read it. Yes. And he would fain, having filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave it to him. So what we did was we wanted to know about this because it said that this man, this son, that he would have been glad to eat. He would have been, he was longing to be fed the same thing they were feeding the hogs. And in the um, English Standard Version where we've been reading from, they call it the pods that the pigs ate. So when you're in Bible study, what do you do? You go and get your computer and you pull it up and say, what, say the pods that the pigs ate in the Bible. Use some, some similar term like that. Just say pods the pigs ate in Bible times or in the Bible. And what it will come up and tell you is that those pods are from a carob tree, C-A-R-O-B. And so they are about the size of your finger, like your middle finger, that width and, and size. And they are purple in color, but they're very high in protein. So they are known the, to be the powder of them when they're dried out is something that the poor people ate. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the people were so poor that ate it that here it is, this man was feeding what poor people eat to his hogs. <laughs> <laughs> so that lets you know that these were poor people. If they can, if what we what we were so like, basically like going in the dumpster to mm -hmm. eat. And this man said he would have been glad to eat what the people was feeding the hogs. But he said no man gave him what? Nothing. And now that when he had money, he had friends. Mm -hmm. And he was doing all his giving. But now that a famine is in the land and he has no money, no one gave him anything. Verse 17. But when he came to himself, mm -hmm. he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here in hunger? <laughs> he said, now wait a minute. I sold myself out to be a, a, a servant to... I